Buongiorno e benvenuti. Welcome to Art Yoga Pills with me, your host, Dinni. In this space we will connect and share together about creativity, inner child and self-awareness. Siete pronti? Enjoy! Ciao a tutti, chi è ora? And welcome to this new episode of Art Yoga Pills. Today I have a very special guest with me. Welcome to Sia Hueca. How are you, Sia? Very good, beautiful. Thank you so much for having me here with you. I'm so glad that I have this opportunity to get to know you better. Uh, I know you already since several years, but this to me is always like a beautiful occasion in which I go a little bit deeper to not just like the person that I met in that present moment, but also to who is this person based on what mm. what your journey led you to. So I'm really grateful that this chance is an opportunity for me and our listener to to get to know you a little bit deeper. And um, I guess that I have my first question for you and see how you feel uh, with this question and see how it lands within yourself with the sharing today. And uh, it could be simple, but I noticed that it could also be like a revelation question. And uh, my offering to you is uh, if you like to share who is Sia. Mm, yes. Um... Yeah, the first thing that comes to me is that I don't have any idea. <laughs> it's quite like a, a really deep question. Um, but also like what comes to me is that Sia is just a part of who I am. It's not the whole picture of who I am. And yeah, that question like invites me to perhaps share a little bit of the story of who I am and reveal perhaps some aspects of me that people they don't know. Um, so Sia is, self, um, is a name that I started using, I think it was in 2016. And it was, you know, has, Sia has their own story, a very powerful story about a woman who wanted to be free and it was a kind of like a liberation me for a liberation story i'm not going to go through that but it came to me and i started practicing how is to be me with this name i was quite a few years ago but before that my real name is Ma. so i was born as one and i got really curious when i found out what was the meaning of the name noah in Hori. That means the uh, mundane. And it makes like it made really sense when I start like thinking about my own myth and my own journey as a human being, you know, using this kind of like two alter egos or two names or two archetypes, you know, whatever you want to put it. I was see I was in a time where I wanted to explore the unseen and I wanted to explore who I was beyond identity or beyond you know what I was conditioned to believe I was um, so see from 2016 um, there was the one birth in you know the work that I'm doing now um, that helps people to connect to that space of them saying but also recognizing that I'm not just that and you know no other mundane is that woman that I like you know the groundedness of life and, and using my mind and the intellectual aspect of self. And I'm very ambitious and I love businesses and I love the beauty of um, being at home, cooking and being with a child. I love like the partnership and relationship. So all of that aspect that is more like connected to the mundane is also part of me. But perhaps it's not that yet, it's more than not. Wow, uh, it's uh, quite fascinating to to dive into a person's journey before uh, that uh, connection between each other started. So also um, having to get to know Noah 
through SIA as well is something really precious. And uh, I'm talking as a person as well that has uh, used Dini as the, the one of the names that I have to identify myself with. And uh, sometimes it might make confusion to those that knows my birth name too, and then they don't make the connection. And so I resonate <laughs> with um, the ability of carrying two or more than one hat that uh, still represent who we are or a portion of that wholeness. So thank you for, for doing that with, uh, with your experience and reminding me of mine too. Mm, thank you. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> so our yeah. journey of connection begin um, when uh, I, uh, I, I was blessed by being your graphic designer for some of your events that you were running here in New Zealand several years ago and uh, that was a beautiful journey of discovery because of course when I take on board these challenges of working with someone it means to me that I have to deepen my knowledge in something that I might not be familiar with but I never had the chance of truly embracing that as a practice like really coming to um, one specific uh, journey with the with your experiences facilitating your temple of the goddess i remember i came to just like an introductory workshop which gave me like the tip the very tip of the iceberg of what your work was about and so i guess that this opportunity is also to get to know you more through your own personal experience and journey of how you went um if you like to share about that or, or rephrasing also my question in a way that might be more suitable for you. But how your journey from Noah led you to become the founder and the facilitator of the Temple of the Goddess? What inspired you in your journey? What motivates you to lead you to the beginning of this path? Hmm. So... I mean, there's so many answers to these questions, steps, and you know, things that happen in my life. But I feel the core answer to that is that I'm so passionate and so driven by polarity work, polarities, like the concept of polarities has been something that it's really a life in my being. It's not, it's not something that I'm just like create a space I work with polarities. It's actually my mindset and the way that I perceive reality um, is through polarity. So makes I'm gonna expand a little bit more in that. But um, if an example, since I was born until you know the time that I decide if you want to say decide or felt like changing my name and went into this more um shamanic and seen real more felt experience that journey it was it was um noah it was that driving being towards something right so it was the goal orientated approach of life and um really into like I want to get better or I want to get somewhere uh, kind of like always moving forward and always into the future and I mean I come from a very traditional family with a military father so I was very disciplined um, very good in my education I studied in my university but I also master's degree I was in private banking, wearing heels and managing like 2 million euros, right? So I, that was my life um, until I was 29. But in the core of my being, that I knew that it was something else and something that perhaps felt the opposite, right? Because I was kind of like living just one polarity. And that um, opposite, it was the temple. It was the approach of life from resting back and allowing life to move me, to bring the authority to the body instead of the mind. And I start to trust more in something bigger than I is moving us. 
more than is me who is great in reality. It's me who has to, you know, work hard and reach to this point. So at that moment, I didn't conceptualize this. Yeah, I didn't know. It was very intuitive. Um, it would start happening. I got curious about um, Tantra. I got curious about what happened if I live you know, my career and just start traveling around the world. What happened if I do exactly the opposite of what I was doing? What happened if I leave my heels and start walking barefoot? What happened if, you know, like that, that if and questioning and challenging myself and I start feeling. That was the key. I start feeling. I start sensing and I start connecting nature and, and to other part of me and that is where you know the temple of the goddess starts it's like how can i create a space that is safe enough for people to challenge themselves and that means that it's not going to be easy because i'm going to bring the opportunity to see what you are actually avoiding or rejecting or denying about yourself and you have the choice to see it, embrace it or not, but it's there, it's in the space. And there's safety in a sense that, you know, we create a container together, we have a specific intentions and there is a protocol to follow. However, I'm not teaching anything. I'm not here to tell you what is right or what is wrong. It's not about religion. It's not about you need to have a certain uh, beliefs. I'm just showing up with my passion of collapsing polarities, of my passion of challenging ourselves to say it's actually true what I'm standing for. And that broke me in pieces, actually. My own work, my own you know, space showed me how little I knew about life how little I knew about myself and I know about myself. So that path was a path of humility and, and it was like, wow, okay, <laughs> I don't know anything. Um, this is how the, the, the work unfolded. Um, and I have to say also that now is also having the work itself because of reflection with me is having another shake. It's having another repositioning and reorientation that perhaps is the reflection of my own integration between Noah and Sia. Wow. Thank you so much for, um, for sharing about your journey and also the polarity of your own life, how you went to one destiny and shifted then to another one that was not the one preconceived by like the modern society let's say of how things should go according to what we've been learning ourselves and uh, through the spaces with uh, surrounding us either our family our society and everything around that so I wonder before to start diving into the polarities of um, of your work with uh, with the temple um how was your experience of embracing this transformation within yourself? If it was um, an easy journey for you to just be curious and go with the flow of life, or you felt anyway some resistance of getting out of your own comfort zone and having to face all these unknown experiences that, although they were not yet presented to themselves, to yourself, they were um, an exploration of what, more possibilities were available for you and uh, and your life. Yes, a really good, beautiful question. Um, I feel like it's always challenging for me to transform. Always, it wasn't never easy. I would say like, like God, oh, I'm transforming and I'm dying and I'm gonna rebirth. I mean, that is a beautiful mental concept that I can understand. It's like, oh, I'm going through transformation. But the reality is that in the in the felt sense in the body, 
there's always so much resistance to leave the unknown. Like there is a part of me that is so scared, terrified sometimes, you know, like because I know in the core of my being that I'm dying. How that is not going to be challenging or is not going to be terrified for any human being, right? This transformation means that you are actually dying. That you are dying. Whatever your identity or concepts about, you know, who you are, or who you believe, we don't have enough space now because we're changing. It's kind of like this you know, concept of the butterfly, like being like a, you know, the caterpillar. And the caterpillar is, you know, in the, this liminal space in between is like, okay, I know I used to be a womb, like a caterpillar, but I don't know who I will become because the caterpillar, they don't know they will become a butterfly. And they are this, this time in the liminal space in the unknown. That is really scary, you know? I think it's really scary. And I guess it's scary also because in our society, we haven't normalized transformation. And we haven't normalized death. Nobody talks about that, right? It's like, come on. However, I mean, perhaps because it's my work, I talk about death, right? Like, a lot. And also because I'm a woman, I believe in every month, I, I die every month. So it's a, it's a theme, an aspect of life that is really important to me. And also, I feel like it's that. Is where wisdom is, is the glimpse in the ability to embrace in the death and then go through the process. So, yes, I mean, every time I'm scared about time, and also every time I get more tools and resources to make it as much comfortable as I can, right? So to put an example, right now I'm going through a process of transformation that has been a couple of years already. So tools and resources I can use when I know I'm dying, it's like, okay, so it's time to be in the cave. You don't have to be social. You don't have to be around um, being happy celebrating summer when you are in a reality is winter and you are you know in the caterpillar state. So make your life supportive to the transformation. Yeah? So more coziness at home, more time at home, more cats around, <laughs> more partnership, more baby, <laughs> and not so much social environment. That's an example. So it's painful, yes, but it's also you know, a more kind of mature way of approaching transformation. One thing that I want to say about transformation also is that I noticed that we tend to embrace transformation expecting um, the rebirth all the time. So we focus in the next step, right? We focus in like, okay, I'm going to go through this. Because one day I will flourish. I will be shining again. I will see the sun. But to actually embrace the moon, embrace the death, and embrace the, I'm actually, I don't care if, if, if the sun is not going to come. What is the beauty of being in that space? What is the wisdom? What is the medicine? And that is where the pain, the, fear or the terror that can happen in the process transforms into surrender, into drinking the beauty of that face. So that's kind of like my treasures <laughs> coming from a lot of transformation. In my Thank you through this sharing also to touch on an important topic that I feel that as human beings we are aware but we are always avoiding it which is the death component and death is 
for for my understanding is just part of the life experience but also it comes in cycles so the cycle of regenerating ourselves every day every week every month every year and so on with the, even the season and uh, if we give space ourselves to to be in that flow there is so much more that as human being we can receive and we are hopefully just two examples of um, stepping out of our own comfort zone traveling to the other side of the world and reinventing ourselves with uh, what the journey led us to so thank you for touching on that and also hopefully inspiring our listeners that might find themselves stuck in a moment of their life in which they might not truly enjoy their present moment their experience to know that there is a way out it's just a matter of getting comfortable with the uncomfortable which it's a process a journey and not always like uh, leaving us with a big smile on the face we need to go so with all the other range of emotion that applies to to that stepping out so thank you absolutely to share on such an important thing that to me is really valuable for this space thank you and I guess that I would like to return with you back to the idea of polarities that, of course, to me, they are um, a thing that we can embrace while we are seeing nature with the, the day and the night, the sun and the moon, the light and the dark, and so also for our experience as human being, despite of all the the, the new waves of colorful rainbow way of being, but also the feminine and the masculine, which from what I learned from you is something that we all possess within ourselves. Um, and so my question for you is, uh, um, how does this work and understanding of ourselves through the workshop, the presentation, the sanctuary that you offer can support us in uh, reclaiming ourself, our balance, our freedom, our wisdom, and uh, anything else that can um, this journey bring us forward to something, either uncover something that was covered, but also learning something new in, uh, in our experiences. Mm. Yeah, um, I would like to start with first, what is the core of the work? So then we can start like, you know, unfolding the layers um, and how it's to be presented and, you know, how it's to experience our current space. But the core of the work is compassion. That is the core of the work. So in uh, how I live compassion is that compassion has to be um, embodied value as in value, right? So we need as human beings to develop, you know, it's kind of like a cultivation of that energy within us. It's not a mental concept. It's not something that Someone says, you know, someone has wrote it in a book and sounds great and <laughs> sounds cool and compassionate. What actually means to be compassionate? You know, how's, how's to actually um, embrace whatever the other people, the other, you know, beings experience? There's, to actually feel that and be compassionate, not trying to change that people or that person or that, even if it feels so different than what I believe or I experience. So that is the core. And that compassion, even deeper, is innocence. Yeah. So it's connected. Compassion, innocence, and deeper than that is pure love. So the way that I approach this um, work is that I invite individuals, and invite myself, of course, because again, I'm not just detaching from the space and in every journey, um, to see what, is, what within me, what within us, 
we are not embraced in this human experience. And trying to love that, that's it. <laughs> Try to embrace it. And in my own experience through the journey, that can be really confronting, that I can find myself denying, um, fighting against, like, you know, all of the coping mechanisms to actually, you know, access to, you know, the parts of myself that I'm still rejecting and I'm still denying. But there is, when I actually do it and I embrace it, there is an unlock of vitality. Yeah. Hello, creativity comes. Something was unlocked and not being able to express through my being. And now the energy can flow and I can finally feel aliveness. And in relationship with others, I can feel compassion and can feel empathy and can feel love because I understand my own being, right? So that's kind of like the core work. And, you know, people that listen in to this and perhaps they've never been in a space that I hold, they're asking themselves, maybe, how the heck are you doing that? <laughs> um, so ritual and ceremony is one of the big pillars of this work. And the reason because ritual and ceremony are big pillars is because I can't control them. So my own bullshit is really difficult to be <laughs> projected in a ritual and ceremony. There is a sacred space where, you know, there is more than my mind or my willingness in the space to bring. Like there's a lot happening. Um, and of course, you know, to be able to perform um, ritual and ceremony, you need safety and you need protocol and you need structure. But then the actual magic happens when everywhere is like allowing. So ritual and ceremony is a big piece and normally it's always at the end. The reason for that is that we need a lot of time to prepare to enter a sacred space. It's so difficult to come into a space, to a temple, coming from your daily life when you're the mundane and jumping into a ritual and ceremony. <laughs> we are going to be doing things from our minds. And that's not how it works in rituals. Really. So I work in different ways, but kind of like the most common temple is eight, nine hours. So the ritual and ceremony comes at the end, the last two hours. So six, seven hours, which is preparing, you know, to just warming up. <laughs> and in that space of preparation, there is a lot of somatic practices, that it is a lot of regulation, you know, coming into a state of regulation that looks, you know, seems like, okay, this is quite normal to be regulated, but no, actually we are not regulated the majority of the time. So how to you know, come back to a space of regulation, not just within ourselves, but with the group. How can we, you know, create a container, there's a field, that is like the same limbic resonance, there is the same vibration, there is um, a knowing that is primal, there's no just from the mind, there's this okay, it's safe. It's actually safe to be here. It's safe to allow myself to open up a little bit. And that takes a lot of time. <laughs> Hours, sometimes the whole day. <laughs> and I use um a tantric approach, uh, and I want to make sure that people who are listening, they don't get tantra with sex, right? Because it's not. Um, tantric approach, more like as a philosophy of cultivation, um, energy within yourselves, um, the, the cultivation of polarity, looking for inner union within ourselves. Uh, so there's a lot of imitation to breathe, there is a lot of imitation um, to start moving and feeling, sensing, being in the body. That is one of the things that you know, in society we're always living out of the body. So being in the body. And I started creating that strong 
foundation within ourselves, kind of like a in a temple. So this is a temple, but we have 20 people in the space, so we need to create 20 temples. <laughs> and in every temple, there is sovereignty. There is a specific um, rules, and they have their own inner authority, their own inner vision, perception. But this is kind of the goal of the temple. It's like, is everyone aligned? Is everyone in their own sovereignty? And then we start walking and we walk again. And you can see like a spiral, you know, like from the beginning of the temple, we start spiraling down, down and down. No, we don't spiral up. We spiral down and down and down to the core, to the essence. So we don't look for higher experience. We look to the feminine path that is going down into the essence, into the void within the womb. You want to go back, you know, like a metaphor. And so, yeah, a lot of time of preparation with tantric approach practices, a lot of somatic education, um, a little bit of mind belief system, perhaps, but not much, because I don't want to penetrate the space within my own. You know, the belief system is something that I try to avoid. And creating the rules. I think rules, the structure, the masculine is so important. I mean, I can't, I can't flow, I can't surrender, I can't open. There is no like pillar, you know, holding. So there's a lot of time talking about what is needed in the space for us to feel comfortable. And there is a talking piece. There is something that we speak about it, that we have a dialogue about it. And then we start, you know, opening our limbs. Uh, so mind will be the first step with creating the safety with that, you know, warden and education. Then it will be more like body and to come back to the body, somatics, limbic resonance, nervous system, feeling safe. And then it will be the last piece of soul. So it will be transpersonal, it will be shamanic, you can call it, a space where we can tap into who we are beyond identity. In the polarity work, there is a lot of um, shadow work. I don't know if you are familiar with this shadow work. If you would like to share a little bit more, um, just because I'm aware that it might not be the the knowledge of all. Uh, so mm -hmm. just just for also people that might not know what is it to get mm -hmm. familiar. If you don't want to go in details, um, we can also just touch the surface. But if you wish to describe a little bit more, that could be useful. So shadow work is a kind of approach where um, we understand shadow as part of ourselves that we deny, we don't even we are aware of, we reject. Um, so the shadow work is a series of practices that we can do to bring that into the lives. That's the first thing. It's like working with awareness, we're like, oh, I'm, I wasn't actually aware of that, I'm actually denying this part of me that has these specific qualities and then creating a specific practice that allows you to embody that, allows you to experience with that energy. Yeah. Um, for example, <laughs> it's coming, I have to share this, uh, this this example because it's the one that is coming, the mother and the whore, that is one of my main you know, um, work and triggers a lot of people sometimes with the other word, the whore. Um, so this is two archetypes of the feminine. You know, there's a huge split within our psyche about these two energies. So one energy, the mother, is more the aspect of us that cares, that is in the service, you know, that is nourishing, that is perhaps um, thinks about others, you know, that's kind of um, plays that 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 service into the center of the altar. And perhaps it's more connected to the upper chakras, you know, the heart, you know, more transcendent. Um, my human needs and desires because there is something else that is more important right now. Yeah? And I can put myself in that devotional um, state of being. And then the whole is 
kind of the opposite, you know, is the part of the woman that is connected to you know, the lower chakras and is more primal and most instinctual and embrace the sexual desires, embrace the me. Like, I'm also important. I also matter. And I also have my own way, you know, and I also need this time with myself to embrace this. So that is something that in shadow work, if someone has been, you know, denying or forgetting the whore, we can create that space for you to experience, right, in your own way. So it's so beautiful because imagine that, you know, you have that opportunity to play, to experience, to drink. From an energy that you, you you haven't allowed in your system. And the beauty that comes from that is the emergence, right? So it's there when you embrace the polarity again, like the mother and the whore. What, what is in the what happened in the emergence of this? And normally it's the purest, it's the child, it's the innocent, is it? The one who is not restricted or put in a box is the one who is creative and playful. So, you know, it's like, I don't fucking care about the poor of the mother or this, the, the beauty of the architects, you work with them and then you release them because you're not that neither. You know? So that would be the work in the temple of the goddess. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much for deepening so much into into the experience um, of the whole process from the beginning to the end of the journey, but going truly deeper in what that could look like in uh, one potential experience that someone might be led to and uh, hosted by, by you uh, in a safe uh, environment that promote all these beautiful qualities, but also allowing us to see what we are hiding to ourselves perhaps as well and uh, and see how we can embrace that aspect of ourselves that we all have a little bit of light and a little bit of dark and um, getting familiar to also the part of ourselves that might feel uncomfortable to us to accept is something beautiful that can give us an experience of accepting something that otherwise will just uh, been limiting us and possibly torturing us in a way as well by not expressing that component and I really like the the one that you choose to pick to to give in as as an example because it's something quite relevant especially for us as uh, women and uh, certain topics quite um, actual as well that we we need to still uh, either embrace or hide according to what the society is what want us to do and and having the space for you to share that is quite valuable to to acknowledging that even the part that we find resistant to accept they need to have space to blossom within our own terms and our own safety of that but knowing that there is a space where we can be curious about ourselves and be guided uh, in discovering something or uncovering something it's quite special so thank you for for all this insight that you gave us today thank you so much Lily. arriving at this point in our conversation i just would like to check in with you if there is anything that you feel like is quite valuable to share that we haven't touched yet and it might be relevant as well for for the sharing that we've been doing up to this point but also something that we haven't yet touched so just feel free also to say no if nothing comes to you but i'm just curious to to explore more if there is um something that might bubble up for you and you wish to use this opportunity yeah i mean as i was um talking about this work i noticed that there's this this thing around People who are having a very tough time right now, like like struggling, like deep struggling. And I mean, you know, like I've been seeing so many people living, you know, so many people dying in the last few years, like dying because they choose to die and you know, letting go of that possibility of life. Um, and I'm talking about you know, depression. Um, mental health, anxiety, a lot of pressure, a lot of stuff. And um, one of the pieces that I was, you know, 
reflecting on on a lot of this journey is that we need us as a society to unshame, like unshame whatever that we are feeling, it's unshaming the feelings, because the shame of the feelings they are killing us. They are not allowing us to fully embrace life. And again, it's what we talk about, you know, like this so transformation, there's a cycle, and it will be times where, you know, as individuals, we need to embrace wanting, and we need to embrace grief, and we need to embrace anger, and we need to embrace, you know, the part of the um, emotional realm of the human being that is not celebrated in our society. But it's nothing wrong with that. So to normalize a little bit more about that and and shame the human state. <laughs> like let it go that I I just I just felt to, to to name this today that if you know someone is listening to this and feel like fucked, it's okay to be fucked. And it's okay if someone is asking you, how are you today? You say, look, I'm really fucked. Like to be authentic. And and I think this is a you know an act of love for us for ourselves and also for the, the rest because we allow them to be themselves and we normalize a society where there is a cool authenticity. Yes, I'm fat. <laughs> yes, I'm in winter time right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I just felt like it really strong in me might be to share this. Maybe someone listening to this and helps them in the journey. Thank you. I really want to acknowledge this part of your sharing because it's all come back to what we've been searching, I guess, for myself and for yourself in our in our path, how to get more comfortable with ourselves, how to find more self-love and self-care opportunities, how to grow through the challenges that life manifests to us, possibly for a reason, but sometimes those challenges might feel like a big heavy weight on on someone and it might not be enough for for them to overcome them themselves so to know that there are opportunities out there to reclaim ourselves and doing it step by step is not something that also me and you cultivated overnight and we are not yet finished to to our journey to to <laughs> we are just at the beginning possibly although many years has passed from when we started questioning ourselves and see what else was available and this is something that i'm also resonating with like the the ability of uh, i was uh, sharing not so long ago how it's easy when we are feeling well to not question anything when life goes well everything is uh, unquestionable because it just flows. But when we are finding ourselves in lower state, there is always a question. And I wonder if there is a possibility to be okay, even when we are low, in the sense that we are not trying to avoid the pain, the challenge, the, the darkest moment in our life. But if there is something there for us to experience, knowing that flow of life will bring us in another flow of state and, um, and possibly move forward. Although, it requires time for the beauty, for the darkness, for the ugly, for the for the light, for all those aspects to be accessible to us with less shame and, as you shared before, more compassion and more love. So thank you absolutely for touching on that. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, uh, I... I guess that arriving to this point in our conversation, there is uh, one of the almost final question that I have for you and is a little bit um, going back to, to your temple journey, but knowing that there is something else that is in the cocoon space waiting to be transformed once again in butterfly in your journey. And I wonder if uh, there is a possibility for whoever is listening to get involved in some of those beautiful experiences that um, you hosted up to this point, if there is something, especially now that we are going towards festival season and uh, you are one of the pillar to many of those spiritual festivals. And I wonder if there is a possibility for us to see you in one of those opportunities, if you are planning to be somewhere or if you are planning to do things also related to to yourself and, and this path or collaboration in which we can 
possibly see you in person soon. Yes. Yeah, the ways um, to work with me right now is mainly online. So I'm launching a program in January that is called The Rite of Passage and talks about transformation, um, going into a beautiful journey through death, a beautiful journey through the liminality in between, and then a beautiful journey through rebirth. And it's, um, yeah, it's quite like different uh, way of working because it's online. So we use a lot of visuals. So it feels like being in a movie, but you are part of the movie. <laughs> Uh, so it's a lot of sounds and visuals and myths and somatic practices and rituals and witchy things. It's, it's really rich. So that is one way to work with me. So it's through online offerings Then I will be doing more this next year. Um, I do mentorship programs. That means one-to-one -one in the three months. And I'm taking a break from festivals at least and in March, March, April. The reason of that is because I'm actually giving a space to more. So I'm giving a space to the part of myself that I just want to be at home with my baby, with my partner. Um, kind of like that, being in the, <laughs> behind the veil and not being really seen my pyjamas and all of those things i'm really enjoying the popcorns and watching movies so that, that's kind of my life um but yeah ways to work with me is online mentorship programs and i'm going to birth next year a big thing so follow my website um, subscribe in my website because you will be um, updated with this news next year yeah so this is the ways wow thank you Sia, for sharing i'm really curious of uh what in italy we say what is boiling in the pot and what is gonna mm -hmm. come out of that so i'm really curious and uh, of course all the link of your social media and website will be in the description of this event so it will be easy for anyone to just click and uh, get to know you a little bit more also through um, the way in which you are offering yourself in the in the web space so thank you for for that and I'm really curious myself to to see what's coming and uh, and I guess that just to conclude our our sharing today I have my final question for you taking it as light or as deep as you want this I always keep it secret so people don't prepare in advance and they try to be as spontaneous as possible um, but hopefully not overwhelming anyone. And my final question for you is an opportunity, if you like, to be connected once again with our listener, with the opportunity of sharing, if you like, three, you can do more, you can do less, uh, but three empowering messages that you have for us today. Also using them as a reminder for yourself or something that... Um, might be valuable for you too and uh, no matter how small or big those uh, empowering messages are mm. the first one that comes to me is that very typical one but so important be yourself like be yourself but actually space like spend time in diving into this be yourself what that means what actually means like what how would be your life if you actually really fully you be yourself if you allow yourself to be fully you and i want to give a space to that one before going into the next one because i think is so important, like so important. And nowadays even more than before, because I really believe that every human being some, has something unique that only you can bring. So if you are not yourself, you're fucking with the rest. <laughs> so please be yourself. <laughs> um, so yeah, be yourself as one. <sighs> The second one that comes to me is that finding 
the balance, like finding the balance. So experiencing the whole spectrum of life, but always finding the balance. Experiencing fully whatever that you want to experience, and then remember that there is always something that is opposite to what you're experiencing. So find the balance. Going fully to through the path of your belief system, but remember always to stop and question what you were thinking and believing and standing up for and find the balance. Yeah. And the last one that comes to me is that reclaim and remember innocence. Place in the center of the altar innocence. Move from innocence. Act from innocence. Like innocence is so important nowadays. Many of us, we actually don't believe that we are innocent. So to reconnect to the innocent self and act from that, being curious, being playful, putting the, the, the nose in places that everybody has told you that you shouldn't go there as a kid, as innocent. Discover by yourself, not for what people are telling you. The innocent mind, the innocent heart, and the innocent body. Innocence. Yeah, be yourself, <laughs> be innocent, and find the balance. Thank you so much. This is one of my favorite parts because I'm the first one embracing those messages and are beautiful reminder for myself too. And I feel like I have goosebumps in uh, just connecting to those empowering messages and take them on board from myself too in my daily experience of life. So thank you absolutely for the reminders. Thank you so much for asking me the secret question. It was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for uh, elaborating on the three concepts. Uh, it's not for everyone. Sometimes it can feel like overwhelming, the secret question, mm -hmm. but I felt that you navigated beautifully and I'm so pleased to to just woo, get in the, the wave of energy that uh, those messages uh, carry, like the wisdom and the insight. So thank you. But also thank you for all the sharing that we've been doing up to this point. It's uh, a beautiful opportunity for me to dive deeper into the knowledge of who you are based on your experience in this journey of life, but also inspiring our communities to to get to take or leave what resonates with the with them as well and possibly opening doors for new co connections and possibilities. So thank you so much, Sia, for all this. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. And um and for everybody else who is listening, I'm really hoping that you might get your own chance to connect with Sia personally, whatever way it resonates for you, but also to take on board for your own time and space, any messages that you feel valuable and, uh, and possibly also having a wonderful day today. So thank you so much for listening. Bye. Grazie per averci fatto compagnia. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. If you wish to stay updated and connected, visit us on our social media channels and our website www.artyoga.co Ci sentiamo presto! Ciao!